Astro Brand goes on to attack Bill Casing for incorrectly stating that Kristen McAuliffe was the only woman aboard Challenger. Casing, in the same interview, stated that he is not an expert on the shuttle, that he has not done a great deal of research on the shuttle. So, Bill Casing, are you saying that Roberta Bondar, Canada's first astronaut, never actually made it in space because she was on the shuttle? Uh, I, well, I'll tell you what, the shuttle is a possibility. After all, it's low altitude. Uh, I haven't done a great deal of research on the shuttle. His statement that Challenger was intentionally destroyed is merely an echo of a claim made by Ralph Rene. Rene never said how many women were aboard, and this statement is purely an honest mistake by Casing. It's always difficult to talk about someone else's work if you do not know it very well. But Astro Brand felt fit to allege that this oversight by Bill Casing undermines everything he ever said. Astro Brand knows perfectly well what my stance regarding Challenger is, and this was his reaction to my statement along those lines. There was no reason to believe that if the O-rings failed, it would be catastrophic. And yet, on July 31st, 1985, six months before the Challenger disaster, Roger Beaujolais sent out the following memo to Thiokol's Vice President of Engineering, Robert Lund. This letter is written to ensure that management is fully aware of the seriousness of the current O-ring erosion problem in the SRM joints from an engineering standpoint. The mistakenly accepted position on the joint problem was to fly without fear of failure and to run a series of design evaluations which would ultimately lead to a solution or at least a significant reduction of the erosion problem. This position is now drastically changed as a result of the SRM 16A nozzle joint erosion which eroded a secondary O-ring with the primary O-ring never sealing. If the same scenario should occur in a field joint, parentheses, and it could, then close parentheses, then it is a jump ball as to the success or failure of the joint because the secondary O-ring cannot respond to the clevis opening rate and may not be capable of pressurization. The result would be a catastrophe of the highest order, dash, loss of human life. An unofficial team, parentheses, a memo defining the team and its purpose was never published, close parentheses, with leader was formed on 19 July 1985 and was tasked with solving the problem for both the short and the long term. This unofficial team is essentially non-existent at this time. In my opinion, the team must be officially given the responsibility and the authority to execute the work that needs to be done on a non-interference basis, parenthesis, full-time assignment until completed, close parenthesis. It is my honest and very real fear that if we do not take immediate action to dedicate a team to solve the problem, with the field joint having the number one priority, then we stand in jeopardy of losing a flight along with all the launch pad facilities. Then I signed it, and a manager that I work for countersigned it, as concurred. I have done more for the Apollo 1 and Challenger crews than Astro Brandt will ever hope to, and he can't even be bothered to find out whether or not there was any reason to believe an O-ring failure would be catastrophic. And Astro Brandt is certainly the one to talk about making false tribute videos. He had the goal to release a three-part diatribe against Ralph Rene and call it a tribute. His so-called tribute video spared no expense to try and drag his name through the mud. Anything from misrepresenting his Apollo and alternative science views to attacking him over his glasses. If there is anyone who is using the deaths of these astronauts for personal gain, it is Astro Brandt too. He is using their deaths to fuel his hate campaign against anyone who disagrees with him. My tribute videos said absolutely nothing about any conspiracy in either the comments or the videos themselves. I didn't even use one single frame of video taken during these actual disasters. I had no intention of showing their actual deaths 
in videos that are made to remember their respective lives. Yet he calls these videos sickening, nauseating, self-serving, unctuous, profoundly offensive, and insulting simply because I happen to be an Apollo hoax conspiracy theorist. Like I said in the beginning, Astro Brandt is a very angry and emotionally unstable old man who is going out of his way to make people who disagree with him look bad by any means possible. In his irrational hate vendetta, he has even attacked satirical videos, believing them to be real, and virtually everything he says in his comments and videos is some kind of nasty and hateful remark. He seriously needs to stop calling people psychotic and have a good long hard look in the mirror. I strongly recommend he consider getting some professional help. Hey 